Hello and welcome to a review of the Nine Barista. Looking at this thing straight away, I know what you're thinking. This doesn't look like any machine that you've seen before. And it certainly doesn't look like any machine that I've used before. To say I was surprised when I took this thing out of the box, it's an understatement. The weight was much weightier than I had anticipated. The look, the feel, the finish was industrial almost. Every part of it shouted pure quality. From the walnut finish to the wooden handle, down to the heavy weight and feel of every part of this machine, which is the first jet engineered stovetop espresso machine. Let's take a look and see if its high price tag is justified. Now, immediately upon opening this thing, I was very impressed. I thought it looked and felt more like a high class performance engine, but what high class performance engine could produce coffee like this? Now, just a little bit of background. The creator of this machine is William Playford, who himself was a jet engineer. This is the first jet engineered stovetop espresso machine. The product is made in the UK. And even though it costs 325 pounds, which has got to be one of its major drawbacks, they claim that by using your own grounded coffee beans, it'll pay for itself within about a year. It is constructed from solid brass and then nickel plated. It has no electronic or moving parts apart from that spring inside. Now let's start off with a quick unboxing and have a look at what you get inside. Um, I have to say off the bat, I'm very impressed that the website allows you to pretty much buy every part that goes into making this device. The only moving part again is the spring. Now in that envelope to the left, you can see the boiler O-ring seal. You do get a couple of them. I'll put on the screen how often they're expected to be replaced. Um, if you do accidentally damage them or if you get it caught up in the machine, they're only one pound each to replace, but I just thought I'd put it out there. Um, now let's take a quick look at each individual part. So you get the heat transfer plate, which is important to have. So it distributes the heat equally across the bottom of the machine. You get the base where you put the water in and this also has the safety valve and it has a little mark as to where you need to fill it up to, which again, like almost anything in this machine, you can replace. I believe the replacement safety valve is 12 pounds. You get a 53 millimeter basket and it also obviously comes with a basket cap. Now, just taking a look at some of the other parts, you obviously get the porter filter, which goes up top. Now, you do not want to overfill this because as soon as you put the chamber that goes above it into the water, it will overflow. It would also cause um, water to come out of the chimney from the side. It will splash out if you put too much water in it as well. So you really want to go up to the point as an absolute maximum or slightly below. Now, just a little side note on that heat exchanger plate. Never cool it down on the cold water. They warn you of that on the website. I can't stress enough how every single piece of this machine, it just has this real weight, this quality feel to it. Now, here's just a very quick breakdown of how this actually works. It has a, a twin boiler system. When the pressure in that lower boiler reaches an iron bar, it causes a valve inside the machine to open. And that allows this hot, high pressure water to go up this pipe and into this helical tube. This coil is submerged in boiling water, and as we all know, water boils at 100 degrees. It then passes through the fin heat exchanger where it cools by a further seven degrees. You've then got water at 93 degrees, which is the perfect temperature for making perfect espresso. I was pumped. I, I hadn't been this excited by a coffee machine in a long time. Um, I bring in coffee machines all the time to review for this channel. My wife usually comes in, she'll have a look, she'll see there's a coffee machine, a new one in the corner of the kitchen, she won't say anything. And you know, I have family over for um, coffee sometimes, no one ever says anything. When I had this machine, the first thing people said when they walked in through the door was, ooh, what was that? It became a conversation point. Now, making the first cup of coffee, I was so excited to do this. So first things first, getting some good quality coffee beans. Now, you might not wanna pour them in like I did. This looks nice on camera, but probably not the most practical way. Um, so I got a mixed blend here and I was ready to make my first cup of coffee and I was super excited. So let me just talk you through how this worked out. It's not what you'd expect. I filled the base with water right up to the mark where it tells you um, to not pass. And again, you don't wanna pass that mark, the maximum fill line, because if you do, you're gonna get water spurting out of the chimney. Next, I grounded down those coffee beans I showed you, tampered it, had it ready, and was ready to make my first cup of coffee. 
Only thing left to do was put the whole thing back together. Now here's where one of my worries came in as well, is that to put this together and get it tightly sealed, and to also, especially when you take it apart, even if you use the pressure release valve, um, even then, to take it apart, it's quite tough on the fingers. You've got to really twist this hard, and uh, even more so when you're taking it apart. And, you know, like, for example, if I gave this to my father, he's in his 70s, and his, um, you know, his, his hands, the bones in his hands aren't what they used to be, and I, I worry that he'd struggle with it. So it's worth keeping that in mind. So the next thing we're gonna do is we're gonna put our heat exchanger plate, put the machine right on top. Now, I did have to mess about with the temperature here. My, um, my dial on my stove runs from one to nine. When I first did it on nine, it, the coffee came out way too quick. When I did it on six, it came out way too slow. Now, if you take a look at the chimney, you'll be able to see some water comes flying out. This is because I'd ever so slightly overfilled it, and this is why I say it's important not to go above that line. Because if you do, just like you can see in the video, it gets a little bit more violent now, you get potentially boiling water spurting out. So I suggest having that chimney not facing towards you like I did in this video, because that boiling water will spurt out and potentially land on you. So you might want to step away from it. Um, this is one of the very few other negatives about this device. Um, but nonetheless, I was super excited to see how this coffee was going to turn out, having never used the machine quite like this. And let's take a look at the results. Here you can see, it came out pretty rubbish. It was not good, there was zero crema. And I was quite disappointed to be honest with you, but I knew that it was something I did wrong as opposed to the machine being inadequate. So I tried it again, and this is the coffee being made in real time. This process that you see here is supposed to take 20 to 30 seconds. Mine takes about 10, about that before it's pretty much done. I knew that this cup of coffee also wasn't going to turn out to be very good and I was starting to scratch my head a bit as to what was happening. As you can see, I'm pouring out the coffee and it just wasn't good. There was no crema. The coffee didn't taste great. It was coming out way too fast. Their website is really, really good. You also get a little instruction um, foldable leaflet that has all the information you need. So props to them for giving you all the information you need essentially on three or four small pages. But this was my second attempt. And again, it didn't come out looking very good. I was starting to scratch my head a bit. So I thought maybe if I grind my beans a little bit longer, it will come out slower. And I thought I'd give it another try, super excited. In fact, I was so confident that I set up a spare cup uh, to make another one right away to give to my partner. And I quickly changed my mind because no matter how long I ground my beans, this was the result. I was not impressed. So I went to Coffee Planet, bought some of the best coffee I could find and decided to give it another try using fresh beans. My last beans were from a store that doesn't specialize just in coffee. They do a whole range of stuff. But I went to a coffee specialist that specializes in brewing coffee um, in Portobello in London and I was super excited to give it another try. So here it is again, yet another attempt this time, this is what the results were. As you can see, again, it came out really quick. I mean, we're talking probably seven, eight seconds there, and I was not overly optimistic. I poured out another cup, and despite getting new, fresh, premium coffee beans, this is what happened. No crema. The coffee did not taste good at all. I mean, it's the kind of thing that I would return if I was in a store. I kept trying again and again. Um, I thought I'd uh, grind a little less, grind a little more. I tried everything I could have. And I actually went to sleep that night thinking about, okay, what can I do? What's my next tactic? And that's one thing I have to say to them. I've never gone to sleep thinking about a coffee machine, but I was actually thinking about it and excited to try new things the next day to try and conquer this. And since the results ended up being the same again and again, I thought it must be this. So this is the DeLonghi coffee bean grinder. This uses spinning blade technology, whereas a lot of uh, more expensive coffee bean grinders use burr grinding. This was a lot more expensive than the grinder that I was previously using. The grinder I was previously using cost $29.99 from Argos, and this grinder I bought from Harrods 
for £199. It can be found for a lot less, but it had a lot more settings. It had over 20 different settings. You could put exactly how many grams of coffee you want. You could put, you could one by one go up in increments. And instead of blades, as you can see on screen there, it uses that Burr technology. So I thought, okay, I'm gonna dial this into 18 grams exactly. I'm gonna use the best beans I can. I'm gonna use the expensive grinder. Let's see if this works. So here we go again. I was excited to give this yet another go. And again, I actually, obviously I can't drink that much coffee. So between each time trying something new, I was just super excited to get back to it and try and conquer this because I've never had this kind of trouble making coffee before, which is both a good thing and a bad thing that you can, you know, you spend time mastering this. I like my Nespresso machine where I just press a button and it comes out the exact same every single time. Whether that's a good or bad thing depends on you and your personality. Um, so here we go. I had got my expensive machine. I had got my expensive beans. I had got everything the best that I could and we were ready to give it another go. So fingers crossed, I've eliminated everything I could think of off the top of my head. So I really, really hoped that this time it would come out good. And this is the results of what happened the next time. It came out a lot slower. It literally took between the 20 to 30 seconds that they recommend of the coffee coming out. You can see there's crema on top. So I was actually super excited at this stage. I cannot remember the last time I pumped my fist in the air with excitement, making a cup of coffee. But this, it came out really good. I did a little bit of froth milk to try something different and I was hooked. I was actually proud. I felt like I had conquered it, which is where the good and the bad of this machine is. I mean, just look at that crema coming out. This is where the good and the bad of that machine is. The good is that if you love making coffee, if you love a perfectly engineered machine, which just looks fantastic, a talking piece, if, you, if you're happy taking time to grind your coffee and then spending the six minutes it takes to make your cup of coffee with this, this is for you because this is, this is a great machine. Also, if money isn't that much of an object, but... This is also where the negative comes. I mean, look at what's on the screen now. I went from that, so there is a learning curve to it, but you should be proud once you get from this to the coffee that I just made, um, that I showed you just previously with a perfect level of crema. But this is where, if this machine is for you or not, comes down to who you are as an individual. I usually have three or four people over for breakfast when I make a cup of coffee. I say usually once or twice a week, um, but that's the thing. This is gonna take about six minutes each time. Once you've made a cup of coffee, you then need to really use the pressure valve to release the pressure, run it under some cold water, give it a little clean. And realistically, you're looking at about five, six minutes minimum between making each cup of coffee because it does, you know, it's not as quick as they say on the website, just simply rinsing it under cold water, releasing the pressure valve, um, you know, putting in a new batch of coffee and then you're ready to go. It realistically doesn't take that long. And I've burnt my fingers pretty well trying to do it super quick when I've got guests around. So, you know, by the time the first guest, if he's waiting for everyone else to get their coffee, there's not a 24 minute gap. And, you know, the thing is, if you're waiting minimum six minutes between each cup of coffee and say there's four of you, by the time the first person gets their first cup of coffee and the last person gets their cup of coffee, it's going to be like 18 minutes. So this is not good if you like sharing coffee with people. As a matter of fact, I'd say even if it was just me and my wife having a cup of coffee, I probably wouldn't say this is the perfect device because she likes to have her espresso hot, so do I. And if you're waiting six minutes for the next person's espresso to be ready or cappuccino or whatever it is you want to make with it, by the time the next person's drink's ready, your drink would have gotten cold. So this is very much a one-man show. This is very much for your bachelor or your bachelorette. But realistically, it's not good. It's not one to share. It just takes too long in between making cups of coffee. If you try to rush it like I did, you'll end up burning your hands um, like I did numerous times. I have no more fingerprints on any of my <laughs> fingers on my left or right hand anymore. Saying that, it makes a great cup of coffee. It's fun to use. It's a conversation piece. Um, will I be keeping it? No, because I often have my father and my brother come around for breakfast and I like with my Nespresso that within a minute and a half we can all have a cappuccino in front of us and sit down together and have a cappuccino or a latte and 
talk and, you know, me not having to stand next to the stove for what, you know, three cups of coffee with this would have taken 18 minutes. Me not having to stand next to the stove for 18 minutes and wash in between. And, you know, it just eliminates me from um, being able to spend time with the other people in the room. If you enjoy taking time to perfect your cup of coffee and if you enjoy putting the time and the effort in and taking pride in it, then this is for you. And even though I'm not personally going to be switching over to this machine, just because that convenience and the consistency um, of being able to just use my Nespresso machine, you know, with my lifestyle and, the, you know, other people in the house drinking coffee as well, it's much, much more convenient. Um, I would say this, I have to give props to this machine for one thing. It's the first machine that I would take out when I had guests and show them and discuss it with them. It's the first machine that actually got me excited about it. And it was the first time in my life I went to sleep discussing with my wife what I was going to try the next day because I was excited to try and perfect the perfect cup of coffee coming from this machine. It really is a beautiful piece of engineering. And if this is for you, you're not going to regret it. They do have a great returns policy. So if you try it and you don't like it, they will take it back. If you think that might be for you, I strongly suggest you give it a go because this is about the most fun I've ever had with a coffee machine. If you enjoyed this review in any way, please like and subscribe. If you didn't like it, press that dislike button twice.